Next is the duty cycle. Duty means the load cycle to which the machine is subjected and it may include the starting, electric braking, no load and rest energized period. A term comes the cycle duration factor. It is the ratio between the period of loading to the duration of the duty cycle in percentage. We can define duties into 10 types from S1 to S10. The first is the continuous running duty or the S1 duty. As we can see, the machine is operated at a constant load and it is maintained at constant load up to the time it reaches the thermal equilibrium. The motor can be operated at this load for unlimited period of time. Second comes the short time duty or S2 type. This the operation is done at constant load only for a given time. The time is defined such that uh, suppose it is written S2 40 minutes. So you can operate the machine for 40 minutes. After that you have to de-energize the machine up to the time the temperature reaches the ambient temperature. Once the temperature reaches the room temperature then only you can re energize the machine from type s3 to type s8 these are periodic duties in s3 type a sequence of identical duty cycles each including a time of operation at constant load and a time de-energized and at rest in s3 the starting current does not significantly influence the temperature rise in s4 type we have a sequence of identical duty cycles each cycle include a significant starting time here the starting time is significant a time of operation at constant load and at a time de-energized and at rest so s4 is identical to s3 but the starting time here is significant the s5 is similar to s4 the only difference is the time of electric braking is significant here. So here in the sequence we have the starting time, the time of operation at constant load, time of electric braking and a time de-energized and at rest. S6 we have a time of operation at constant load and a time of operation at no load. There is no time de-energized and at rest. So we have load, we have no load but the machine is always in on condition. S7 we have a starting time, we have a time of operation at constant load and we have a time of electric braking. We do not have any time of de-energized and at rest. So the machine starts, runs at constant load, electrical braking occur and just after that again it is started. In S8 we have a time of operation at constant load corresponding to a predetermined speed of rotation followed by one or more times of operation at other constant loads corresponding to different speeds. So in this we have different speeds, different loads and different rotation. Different times of operation at different loads and different speeds in S8. S9 is defined as a duty in which generally load and speed vary non-periodically within the permissible operating range. And S10 is defined as the operation characterized by a specific number of discrete values of load maintained for a sufficient time to allow the machine to reach thermal equilibrium. Next comes the IP, ingress protection. In IP we have generally two letters following IP. The first character numeral tells us about the protection against foreign objects or solid foreign objects while the second character numeral tells us about the protection against ingress of water with harmful effects or any kind of moisture. There is X written either in the first place or in the second place. It signifies this that the tests are not applicable to the product. Zero that means the product is non-protected. If it is one for the first term that is it is protected for solid objects greater than 50 mm. If it is two then solid ob objects greater than or equal to 12.5 mm. It, if it is 3, solid objects greater than or equal to 2.5 mm. If it is 4, greater than or equal to 1 mm. If it is 5, it is dust protected. If it is 6, it is dust type.
crystalline liquid if it is one it is protected against vertically falling water drops protection against direct spray of water up to 15 degree from vertical if it is three protection against direct spray of water up to 60 degree from vertical four protection against water spray from any direction if it is five protection against low pressure jet of water from any direction if it is six against temporary flooding of water seven protection against the effect of immersion between 15 mm 15 centimeter to one meter is eight protected against long periods of immersion under pressure next comes the motor connection diagram so we have some standard motor terminal connection it may be 201 or 202 or 301 or 302 a motor contains six terminals 1u 2u 1v 2v 1w 2w terminals for each coil 201 and 202 we cannot modify the terminal connection in 201 one side of the three coil terminal is fully braced in motor itself that is standard star connection is done inside the motor itself so you cannot change it star delta starter cannot be used here in 202 standard delta connection will be made within the motor itself so again you cannot change it you cannot use star delta starter if you want to start the motor in 201 and 202 you can use either direct online method or auto transformer starter or vft in 301 and 302 you can modify the terminal connections as per your requirement lecturer brings all six terminal connection to the terminal box 301 the windings are bound in star fashion in terminal box that is you can short three terminals and bring out the supply from other three while in 302 windings are bound in delta fashion in terminal box here you can use all types of starters next comes the frequency so generally on the name rate it is written 50 hertz plus minus 5% or 60 hertz plus minus 5%. So if it is written 50 hertz plus minus 5% that means you can run the motor in this range that is 47.5 hertz to 52.5 hertz. And only your machine will give good efficiency. Next comes the insulation class. So the surface temperature of the motor is typically 30 degrees centigrade lower than its winding temperature. Now we have four different classes of insulation, class A, class B, class F and class H for motors. For the class A, we have maximum temperature rating is 105 degrees centigrade. For class B, it's 130 degrees centigrade. For class F, 155 degrees centigrade. And for class H, it's 180 degrees centigrade nowadays the practice in industries is to address these classes in the form of movable temperature rise so if we assume the ambient temperature to be 40 degrees centigrade and we take the hotspot temperature margin to be 10 degree centigrade for b class 10 degree centigrade for f class and 15 degree centigrade for h class allowable temperature rise will be 80 degree for class b 105 degree for class f and 125 degree for class h so the industrial practice is to use class f insulation with 80 degree centigrade rise which is allowable temperature rise of class b insulation so it uh, may be as class f b so in class f b we have 80 degree centigrade permissible temperature rise what is the benefit of this we have a 25 degree centigrade safety margin in this it increases the life of the motor by up to five times after you exceed a certain temperature threshold the insulation de deteriorates at an increasing rate almost 10 degrees centigrade increase increase the deterioration rate by double a class F insulation if you run the machine at 155 degree centigrade it will run for 20,000 20, hours 2.5 years while if you run the machine at 165 degree centigrade it will run only for 10,000 hours if you run the machine at 145 degree centigrade it will run for 40,000 hours 5 years while if you run the machine at 175 degree centigrade it will run for less than 1 year 5,000 hours Likewise, if you run the machine at 135 degree centigrade, it will run for 10 years, 80,000.
hours. Maximum ambient temperature is scripted on the nameplate and it denotes that at this temperature the motor can run and still be in the tolerance limit of that insulation class. Generally it is 40, 50, 60 degrees centigrade. Comes the bearing DE and DE. So DE denotes driving end and DE denotes non-driving end. So it tells you the number of bearing which is to be used at driving end and which is to be used at non-driving end. Next comes the relube hours or relubrication hours. So these are the number of hours after which you have to refill lubrication in the in the bearing side. So it may be a grease. Next comes the MTG that is mounting. So it shows the mounting type of the motor. So as you can see in the image, all the mounting types starting with B are the horizontal mounting, while the mounting starting with the V are the vertical mountings. Is the power factor. So the power factor denoted on the motor nameplate is the full load power factor of the motor. It is nothing but an expression of the ratio of active power to apparent power in percentage. Next is the service factor. So it is a multiplier which when applied to the rated horsepower gives you a permissible horsepower loading which you can carry out for short duration at rated voltage and frequency. So suppose a service factor of 1.15 that means a 10 HP motor can provide 11.5 HP for short term. Operation at service factor load for extended periods will usually reduce the motor speed, life and efficiency. Next is the design letter. It covers the torque and current characteristics of the motor. So, the categories A, B, C and D defined different characteristics. Design A there is no limit in starting inrush current while in design B the manufacturer puts a limit to inrush current on his product. When AC motors are started with full voltage they create an inrush current that's usually many times greater than the full load ampere. The high current can cause a system voltage dip that could affect other equipment also. So the start inrush current has been standardized and defined by NEMA in terms of kilovolt ampere. These values are very important for selecting and sizing motor starters, proper branch circuit protection devices. Next is the altitude. So it is the maximum height above sea level at which all the nameplate parameters of the motor are met. So if it is not mentioned on the nameplate, uh, then take it as 1000 meters.